tangled up in fear what if he's somehow involved what if he's speaking through it all who knows how he'll get a hold of us get our attention to prove he here we are good morning i sure hope um, that this Sunday morning finds you well. It's a little different today, uh, and as it will be for most churches, I'm sure. But I got great news for you. I've been here for a while, and uh, been able to pray with some of our uh, some of our staff that's working today. And I really appreciate um, the fact that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, has already manifested Himself, uh, even during our prayer time and. Uh, I'm excited to see what God's going to do right now. I really believe that um, uh, that we're on the cusp of seeing a work of God. And uh, if nothing else, I know uh, this morning in my heart, I'm longing uh, to see our church family again be back in this building worshiping uh, the Lord. But until then, I'm thankful uh, that God has given us the opportunity to be able to go out from here while you're sitting uh, in the comfort of your living room or wherever you may be right now, that we have an opportunity uh, that we can still share the gospel and the truth of the gospel with you. So I praise the Lord for that, uh, for those that had the foresight years ago to make sure that we have this opportunity. And so I'm excited today, too, because we got some live music for you. And uh, that's where I want us to go in just a minute. But before we do that, let's pray together and just ask God to help us today uh, as we worship him. Lord, we love you. We're thankful today that you love us. Father, I am um, I'm honored that, uh, that, God, you've chosen us uh, this generation for this time. And I don't think it's an accident. Lord, I believe uh, that all of this uh, is the providence of God. And I also believe that all things work together for good uh, for them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So today, I, I pray today, Lord, that uh, that would be shown here. I, I ask you today... Uh, to manifest yourself like you already have uh, to us. Uh, God, just uh, let folk know that you are God and you're on your throne. And, uh, and Lord, you got this all under control. And I pray you'd speak peace to people's hearts. Uh, and God, use this time uh, to draw us closer to you. As we talked about uh, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, Lord, as we draw nigh to you, you draw nigh to us. And I pray uh, that that would be what happens today, that we would draw closer to you. Uh, we love you and praise you. We thank you for your goodness to us. Now, God, would you lead us? Would you guide us and direct us? And we're going to praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> You know, I just I couldn't come up with, uh, last night I was trying to think of some songs to do, and I just thought, you know, I'm just going to sit here at the piano and just, like I do at home sometimes, and just, you know, it's just an audience of one, a lot. it's just you and the Lord, and that's, you're at home today listening, and, and I just pray that uh, that you would just, just kind of close your eyes and just worship, and um, let's just uplift Him. Because he is great. Our God is a great God. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great! Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. Thank 
Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation And take me home For joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great. Our God, oh, see how great, how great is our This time more than ever. People need the Lord.
Who do we have our hope in, folks? Because he's an open door. He says, behold, I stand and knock. He wants to come in. He wants to sup with you. He wants to, he wants to dine with you. He wants to be your everything. He stands at that door today. If you don't know him, I pray that, that you come to know him. The Bible says, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you don't know him, you need him today, folks. People need the Lord. strength is perfect you know the Bible says that his strength is perfect for his strength is made perfect in weakness you know we got a lot of weak folks right now folks a lot of weak hearts a lot of fearful hearts but Jesus said he'd never leave us he'd never forsake us his strength is perfect His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Strength in His power. strength is perfect his strength is perfect Fun. Laid me 
kind of stone He lived to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall You thought of me Above all Crucified Laid beyond the storm He lived to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall thought of me above all you took the fall you thought of me above all you know there's a song that uh this song says, somebody's praying me through. You know, we need the prayers of God's people right now more than all. All, all of God's people. The, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth, availeth much, the Bible says. And folks, we all need to be praying right now. Praying our brothers and sisters through. Pressing over me like a big blue sky. <clears throat> No, someone has me on their heart tonight. That's why I know it's gonna be all right. Cause somebody's praying me through. Yeah. Somebody's praying me through. It may be my mother, it might be my dad, or old friend I forgot I had. But whoever it is, I'm so glad that somebody's praying me through. Yeah, so. Somebody's bringing me through, through the tears, through the pain, through the sorrow, through the rain. He keeps bringing me through, over and over. drowning in a sea of hurt and it feels like life couldn't get any worse there's a blessing waiting to push back the curse cause somebody's praying you through yeah Somebody's bringing you through, yes. Somebody's bringing you through.
amen and amen. Thank you so much. Praise God. I hope that you felt what I felt sitting there. I'm glad that um, we don't have to have a crowd to feel the Holy Spirit. And I felt him all morning. Uh, man, I'm thankful for, uh, for that prayer. And uh, I couldn't help but to think uh, in my life and through my life the times that I didn't know where my help was coming from, but somebody was praying me through, and I, I thank the Lord for that. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 8, verse number 37, it says, Nay, in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm thankful today that uh, no matter what's going on in our life, that uh, we are more than conquerors. I like the way that, uh, uh, that that's put there. Uh, I was thinking about this morning, and I've thought about it all pretty much all week long, and especially since uh, the decision was made for us to go um, to an all-online service. Uh, and again, I, I just um, I want you to know that, um, that this church has been praying uh, we got folks that are sick, I know that, but, uh, uh, but we've been praying about this, and I think this is such a great opportunity for us to remind everybody uh, what the Word of God says and the truth of God's Word, that uh, we are truly more than conquerors. I was thinking about this like I uh, was saying a minute ago. Uh, I thought about a story of a, of a photographer for a national magazine, and he was assigned to get photos of, uh, of a forest fire. And uh, smoke at the scene had hampered him, and uh, he asked his home office if they would hire an airplane and that he could um, go and take some pictures. And so arrangements were made uh, at a nearby airport where the plane would be waiting for him. And when he got there, uh, a plane was warming up near the runway, and so he jumped in with his equipment and he yelled, let's go. So the pilot swung the plane into the wind and uh, it wasn't long till they were up in the air, and uh, he yelled to the pilot, fly over the north side of the fire. I want you to make four low passes. Why, asked the pilot. He said, because I'm going to take pictures. I'm a photographer, and, ph and photographers take pictures. And after a pause, the pilot said, you mean you're not the instructor? <laughs> I thought about that, and I thought, you know, that's kind of how life feels uh, to us sometimes. Uh, it, it seems that whoever may be driving the plane doesn't know where he's going or what he's doing, but that's just how things uh, sometimes appear uh, to you and I. From our vantage point, it seems that our lives get into more messes than we can figure out, but, but then again, that's just, that's just how it appears. Um, According to the Bible, the children of God are a perpetually victorious people. We can't see it, we don't always feel it, and we don't always live like it. But the fact that we don't always see it or feel it or live like it doesn't change the fact that it's truth. That we are always going to be victorious as God's people. Uh, the verse that I, that I quoted just a minute ago has been bringing comfort and hope to uh, God's children for over 2,000 years. And it reminds us simply of this, that we are more than conquerors, no matter how things appear to you and I right now, and in spite of how we may feel about our circumstances. Uh, we all have uh, pretty much the same circumstances right now. And, and if we're not careful, we'll allow fear and defeat and despair and, and all that stuff to come up in us. But the Word of God is pretty plain in this one verse, and we'll try to encompass some of the verses around it to tie it all together. But I want to remind you that the Bible tells you and I that we're more than conquerors, no matter how we feel, uh, that today we are. We may feel like that inexperienced pilot, um, but regardless of how we feel, the verse, the, this verse offers hope and peace and encouragement. If you're discouraged or defeated and overwhelmed by life, and I just want to take a fresh look at this familiar verse and just um, talk to you uh, for just a few minutes on this thought that God has given us a powerful reminder that we need to, I, 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 listen, I don't want to be a cheerleader today. I don't want to try to drum up something that's not here. 
But I really want to share the truth of God's word today. Uh, and I want you to be encouraged today that the word of God is plain to you and I that we are more than conquerors. A lot of people uh, want to say, well, I'm, I'm a conqueror. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror. We are more than that. And so I want to give you three quick things today, and we'll try to pile some more stuff in there on this idea of, of uh, we are more than conquerors. Just as a reminder, I want you to understand, number one, the reality of our conquest. That's what conquerors do. They conquer. Paul used the phrase more than conquerors. That word uh, that translates there, it means that, that we gain a surpassing victory or to be completely victorious, to carry away an overwhelming victory. It literally has the idea and I almost titled this sermon this, of being a super conqueror. Because we are more than conquerors. Not, we're, we're not just conquering, we are super conquerors. We're more than that. And that's what the Bible says we are. But that's not always how we feel, is it? Most of the time, most believers uh, seem to be a little bit overwhelmed by life. And especially in this time, it can be overwhelming I, I've had a lot of text and some encouragement this week and I've had some phone calls from uh, literally all over the place and and a lot of these are uh, can be a little bit overwhelming uh, but most for the most part they're very encouraging because again we we draw that that uh, from each other but the Bible says that we are all that we are as Christians that we are super conquerors when Paul writes that we are super conquer he uses a tense that suggests a pretense he is talking about an active situation in other words he's saying that Christians keep on winning a glorious victory he's saying that even when all of life around us and against us that that, that everything hell itself is coming against us he's saying listen to me not only are you a conqueror or will you conquer but you will be more than that hallelujah for God's promises we are more than conquerors regardless of how things feel regardless Regardless of how things look, Paul's saying you're more than you even realize. You think you can conquer this or conquer that. You're more than that through Christ Jesus. No matter how you feel, no matter what's going on, you're more than a conqueror. 2 Corinthians 2.14, it's a clear testimony of God's word. Here's what it says, now thanks be unto God, which always, look at that word, Always, what does always mean? Always means always, and that's all it ever means. And that's what Paul's saying here. Now, thanks be to, unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Listen, he always causes you. No matter what the circumstances is, God is going to always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus, not in our strength, not in anything with us, but in him. Thank God that we have that promise that we are more than conquerors and we will always conquer in Christ Jesus. He makes it manifest by him in every, I like that, in every place. So it don't matter where you're at today. You're sitting at home. Uh, I wasn't going to use the word quarantine today because I've heard it enough to where my head hurts. But maybe you are in quarantine and you're listening to us by one of the different avenues. I want you to know something. In the place that you're at right now, according to the scripture we just read, the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror in every place that you're sitting right now. And our prayer should be that we would accept by faith the promises of God concerning the victory that we have in Jesus. Our prayer should also be that God would help us to live out victory every day, no matter what's going on in our life, <laughs> no matter what our circumstances is. We ought to live in victory. Well, preacher, it's easy for you to say, no, not today it's not. It wasn't yesterday. Tomorrow, there's so many things up in the air and uncertain. People are worried about everything under the sun. How in the world can we live in victory? Here's why we can live in victory, because it ain't about us. It's not our victory. 
We're always looking to win something. Let me tell you something. We've already won if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. 2,000 years ago when Christ hung and died on the cross of Calvary and he shed his holy, precious blood that you and I could have life eternal. Guess what? When I accepted that, I won. Amen. I became a victor. And that's why I can say today that there is a reality of this being a conqueror, that I am more than a conqueror, no matter my circumstances. Thank God today for that. But there's a second thing here. Not only the reality of it, but the realm of our conquest. Paul says we're more than conquerors. All these things, all these things. See, most of us have the idea that victory occurs when we're living lives that are free from troubles. It's easy to be victorious when there's no affliction. It's easy to be victorious when there's no heartache. But Paul says that the reality is something far different. He says that we are super conquerors. We're more than conquerors. In spite of everything the world and the devil can throw at us, the, these things Paul's referring to can be found in Romans chapter 8, verse 33 34 and 35 and if you'll look at that I hope you'll mark it in your Bible because you're going to see that there's a lot of these things that are a common part of living he said this who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect it is God that justifieth who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ Oh, it gets real here. Look here. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now, think about that. Paul's saying that we are super conquerors no matter who charges us in verse number 33. We're victorious over all of those who would challenge our relationship with the Lord. God has justified us. That word justified me. Just if I had never sinned, I've been justified by him. How in the world can you live in, in any other thing but victory when you know that no one can lay a charge to you because of what Christ did on Calvary? I know people would say about me, James, maybe even some of y'all watching, you haven't seen me in a while. You say, man, I know how your life used to be. I know what you've been. I know what you were. And so do I. <laughs> but guess what? God doesn't remember it anymore because when I accepted Christ Jesus, I got the victory. I became, listen, as if I'd never sinned. All of my sin, God cast in his sea of forgetfulness. And you may hold it against me, but I'm telling you, uh, he doesn't hold it against me anymore. <laughs> So I'm a victor today. That's why I can act like and walk like and live like I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Thank God for that. Listen, not only can you not charge me, but you can't condemn me in verse number 34. <laughs> we are victorious over those who would declare that we're unworthy before the Lord. I'll agree. I am unworthy. I stood condemned before him. I was lost and undone until I confessed my sins. See, Jesus Christ died for you and for me on the cross. He shed his blood to save us, and no one can undo what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Oh, bless his holy name. Listen to me. I, there is therefore now no condemnation. Thank God that I, I'm not, listen, you can't charge me, you can't condemn me. And then verse number 35 says, you can't confound me. <laughs> See, the world and the devil, they have ever been the enemies of the children of God. These attacks, they're frequent, they're severe, and in spite of everything they throw in our direction, the Word of God tells us we're still victorious. <laughs> Their efforts, they can't defeat us. And guess what? You listen to me, they can't destroy us. <laughs> Why? Because we've already got the victory. Thank God. We are super conquerors today i want you to look at these list of attacks the children of god face in this life look here this is nothing new we, we act like we've been caught off guard in a minute i'll share why listen here's the attacks tribulation that means to be squeezed or to feel pressure anybody feel pressure <laughs> oh my that's common that's a common problem we all face john 16 says this these things have i spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. Now look at this. 
in the world ye shall have tribulation. Oh, but look, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. <laughs> Thank God I have overcome the world. John 16, 33, he said, you're going to have tribulation. But you don't have to worry about that. Why? You can be of good cheer because I've already overcome that. Job chapter 14, verse 1, here's what Job said. He said, man that is born of woman is a few days in full of trouble. Full. So tribulation is nothing new. Jesus said, listen, you're going to have tribulation in this world. You will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. <laughs> I've already won. You've already won. You're more than a conqueror today. You're a super conqueror even when tribulation comes. Distress. Look at this. Literally means a narrow place. You know what it means? I found this interesting. It means to be hemmed in by one's circumstances it means to be trapped with no way out that's what that means <laughs> so not only are we going to have tribulation we're going to be distressed we're going to be hemmed in man i can't tell you how many people i read this week felt trapped felt hemmed in by our circumstances we, we got mamas and daddies and grandmas and trying to teach fifth graders math you talk about being hemmed in <laughs> We, we got folk that are afraid to leave the house. We got folks that don't need to leave the house. Amen. They feel hemmed in. And the bad news is it may get worse before it gets better. But the good news is Jesus said, you're a super, you, you can conquer that distress. <laughs> Why? Because I've already overcome the world. Amen. I've already overcome. Then he goes on here, and here's another one listed. Uh, persecution. Suffering inflicted on us because of our relationship with Jesus. <laughs> Famine, that's another one. A lack of necessary resources. See, this is a natural byproduct of persecution. Famine. Man, I was in the, I was in the grocery store this past week. I, when, when, when it was announced that we, all, we had our first case in Scott County, and I was already at Walmart, not to, not to bulk buy or panic buy, I just had to pick up some regular groceries. And when the announcement went out and people started hearing about it by social media, it was, it was insane. I called Don and I said, this place is, I got to get out of here. Somebody's going to kill me with a buggy, amen. Listen to me, we, we have to be careful. Famine, Jesus said, you don't have to worry about famine. Now, I'm not saying he's saying you don't have to do anything. But here's the thing, if we worry about it, it's already been dealt with. It's a natural byproduct of persecution. Jesus said you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have persecution. These times are going to come. We act like we're just totally blown away, and maybe we are because it's never happened in our life before. But I want you to know something. Jesus had already seen it. And he said, you're more than able, more than capable to overcome all of this stuff. You're more than, you're a super conqueror. Praise God. Fam nakedness. Now, why do they throw that in there? That means a lack of proper clothing. To be in a state of destitution. That's also a byproduct of persecution. Think about that. Peril. That's the threat of imminent and awful danger. I heard more about that than I needed. You know what? I figured out something. I want you to listen to me, church. We need to get off of social media sometimes. And I thank God for it this morning. But we need to shut it down sometimes. We need to turn off the news. We need to go back to God's word. <laughs> mm. Listen to me. In times like, like these, we need to know what God has to say. Huh? Oh, I respect our leadership. We should. We, we are subject to the laws of the land as believers in the church. ought to lead the way. I believe it's all my heart. But the bottom line and the end result and who gets the last word is this right here. God's holy word. It tells me in a time of peril that I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. I'm a super conqueror. Look at the sword. That's another one. Nakedness, peril, sword, the threat of murder. The cold, hard, death-dealing instrument that sent on many a believer off into eternity. Listen, we are more than conquerors. Write this down. Here's why we're more than conquerors. Not because we avoid these things, but we are more than conquerors because we are triumphing over them through Jesus Christ. 
I have heard Christians say, I can't believe God's doing this to us. <laughs> Why can't you believe that? Listen, our pain and our suffering is very real. But don't you forget about this. You remember this. So is God's purpose. Oh, listen to me. We have to remember that his plan for our lives, his plan for our lives, listen, and my plan for my life is rarely the same plan. But don't you discount the fact that a holy God is sitting in heaven today, not caught off guard, not pacing heaven's floors, but he's sure of himself because he knows what the outcome's going to be. And we're more than conquerors through him. Listen, that trial of our faith being much more precious than gold that perish. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory. You say, preacher, and I've heard this from family members, from friends, from people that just need to talk to a preacher. I've talked to people this week by phone and text that normally wouldn't call and ask my opinion on nothing. They don't want to know it (laughs) because I'm going to go back to the Word of God. But some of those folk now are calling and they're texting and please continue to do it. And I hope you'll share our messages on Facebook. I hope you're already hitting the share button. because Not because of me, but I want the world to hear what I'm about to say right here. I think I I really believe something's going on. I've been saying it. And so they asked me, say, Preacher, what do you think is going on? Let me tell you what I believe he's doing for the church and for God's people. I'm going to go off script here for just a minute here even though I've got this written down it kind of mirrors what we're talking about and we'll get back to that but I want to tell you what I believe he's doing number one I believe he's refining our lives the verse I just read first Peter 1 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory to the appearing of Jesus Christ See, just like a goldsmith heats up the ore to remove the impurities, I think God can use these trials and does use trials. He uses afflictions in our life to rid us of imperfection and impurities of the flesh. You believe this is a judgment of God? Do you ble- Listen to me. Here's what I do believe, and here's what I know. I know that God will make it hot sometimes on the life of a believer that he may purify us. <laughs> Listen, what if this is the time that God is using <laughs> to get the church ready all oh, to be the bride and it ain't going to be long until all oh, the trump of God's going to sound. You think about that? Can you, can you get through a little bit of affliction here on this planet that if you knew that God was preparing a bride to be white and ready. Oh, can you believe that? Oh, I believe with all my heart. I believe God could be refining you and me. Oh, that he would. Say, preacher, it hurts. I know it hurts. And it hurts all of us. But the Bible says you're more than a conqueror. He's refining us. He's remaking our lives. Oh, listen to me. When he finishes with us, we'll be less like ourselves. And more like the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I listen, if we could just get that through our head. When he's done, Romans 8, 29 comes to mind. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Wow. Ephesians 4, 13 Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I believe he is refining our lives, but I believe he is remaking our lives. Why? Because, listen, we, we, we're spoiled. The, the American church, the modern church, is rotten to the core. We've been so spoiled, our pews are padded, our, our heat's on, our air condition's on, we got the stained glass windows, we got the oak and the, and the leather. Man, we got it all going on here, and we're rotten to the core. I think maybe God might be saying, hey, listen to me. If, you, if you're not there a little while, you might appreciate the house of God a little bit more. Huh? And not only that, but, but you might be right when you go. <laughs> he may be remaking us to think a little differently. 
Oh, listen to me. I miss having pews filled with God's people. Oh, my heart this morning is heavy. Yesterday afternoon, I sat on the couch and studying, and I said to Donna, I'm so burdened for our people. She said, let's pray, and we held hands for the first time in a long time, and we cried out to God, God, would you remake our life again? Would you get rid of us that we could be more like you? Oh, that he would breathe on us one more time and remake us into the image of his only begotten son. Oh, that he would do that for us. Oh, that God would touch us again. What's he doing? He's refining and he's remaking our lives, but he's also realigning us. 2 Corinthians 12, oh, listen, I, I hope you feel what I feel here today. Oh, that the Holy Ghost of God would stop by an almost empty building and breathe on us again. Who are we? Oh, that God would have the time for us. But I'm so glad that he does. He could be just realigning us today. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, and lest I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. I am become a fool in glory, and you've compelled me, for I ought to have commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. Maybe God is trying to realign his church today. Maybe he's working in us to bring us to a place where life ceases to be about us and all about him for his will for our life. Listen to me, church. The process is painful today. Oh, but that the preachers of God would stand behind pulpits and empty churches until we can again be more like Jesus and less like the world. Maybe that's what we need today is God to break us down and show us that it ain't about us anymore. It's been about us for a long, long, long time. How many can we pack in? How much money can we pack back? How much prettier can we make things? And all the time, the Son of God has been left outside the door. Maybe it's time God's realigning us again to say, I don't have to show up. I don't have to bless you, but I will. But you're going to have to get right with God. It must be more about Him and less about me. Oh, that God would stir us again and send revival to a dry, thirsty dying, sin-plagued, violent world again. May the preachers of God get back to the place where we preach the truth of God's word. Oh, my soul, God, would you stir us again. God, would you wake us one more time that we could be right with you and our family could be saved. Oh, that we could feel him again. What a process. How painful is it? Man, it's painful, but it's necessary that he may be glorified. We got to remember that God will get more glory from our lives when we're being purified than he will when we're allowed a life of ease. <laughs> oh, yeah, today he can be glorified. We've had it too easy, church. We've had it too easy. All oh, that we could make up our mind. Are you going to church today? Huh? Are you going to listen to the preacher today? You're going to Sunday school today. You're going to pay your tithe today. You're going to pray today. You're going to open up the word of God today. Huh? We, it, it's a choice. We've been making it. And I listen, I'm not fussing, but I want you to know today. 
Oh, how we need him. Oh, how we need his presence. God, would you help us? If you have to realign us, then would you realign us? Listen to me. If I'm allowed a life of ease, he may not be glorified. All that truth can be seen in the book of Job. That truth can be seen in you and I. The preacher, I don't believe that. Let me ask you this. When do you pray more? When does the Bible mean more to you? When are you more likely to seek the Lord? Hmm. I'm going to tell you when. It's very simple. It's a universal. We're more likely to do these things when the heat's on. When the heat's on, we're more likely to listen to. I had to repent. God, I haven't spent as much time oh, as I need to spend with you. And it took, a, it took this to get us there. Oh, but listen to me, church. If it'll bring us closer to him, if it'll bring us to a place that he's exalted and we're not, oh, then pour on the heat. Oh, listen to me, if we could just see him again, like he is meant to be seen, when we pray more, when we read more, when we attend church more, when we love more. Psalm 103, 14, for he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are dust. <laughs> just as it takes time, heat, and pressure to transform coal into diamonds, it takes the same circumstances to transform sinners into saints. Oh, listen to me. Not only do we see here the reality in the realm, but we also see, I'm going to give you this finally, we see the reason. Paul tells us that the only reason that we're victorious in this life is through him that loved us. See, our victory doesn't lie in ourself. Our victory lies in him alone. It's him. I want you to think for just a moment what we deserve. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what we deserve? We deserve to die, every one of us. Death is what we deserve. Think about that. Then I want you to think for a minute about the nature of his love for us. Jeremiah 33.3, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Wow. See, I know what I deserve, but I also know the nature of his love. <laughs> then stop and think about what he did to prove his love. Simple verse, John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> the love of God for his children, it's, it's vast, it's deep, it's far-reaching. And God wants us to know that nothing can separate us from his great love. Romans chapter 8, those verses surrounding what we just read there, if you go on past 37, verse 38 and 39, they're a commentary on the deep, the depth of, and the breadth, the height, the length of God's love for his children. And Paul tells us that none of those things mentioned in those verses can separate us from the love of God. That word separate means to divide, to put asunder, to divorce, to put away. <laughs> the word able in verse number 48 means to have power. In other words, none of the things people fear so much has any power to divide us from God's awesome love. We go through those things. We need to be assured that our hearts even the pains and the sorrows and the afflictions of life, that they are evidence of God's love for us. Paul knew this. And here's what Paul shares about his trials in 2 Corinthians 11. I hope you'll mark this down, verse 23 through 28. Here's what Paul says. Are there ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent. In deaths oft of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, 
in hunger and thirst, in fasting and often, in cold and in nakedness. Yet in verse 38, here's what he said. Oh, I love this, that he's persuaded. <laughs> That's a perfect tense. It means that Paul stands convinced and nothing can change his mind about the matter. He knows that God knows what he's doing. You may think it seems like the pilot don't know what he's doing. I want you to know something today. You look at me. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. I'm persuaded like Paul today. I'm persuaded he knows what he's doing. So we're more than conquerors. But see, we don't have to do anything to ensure our victory because victory is ours. Because the Lord loves us. He promises that his love is the guarantee of our conquest. We, we as believers, we accepted Christ. We became the victor. Are you convinced? Are you convinced of that? Are you saved? <laughs> if you are, you're more than a conqueror. Listen, I don't always feel like it's true. I don't always live like it's true. But the Bible assures me that it's true. I'm interested in that truth becoming a reality in our lives. I can't think of a better time. I, I don't know. I don't know of a more frightful time it could be. Oh, I quote the scriptures. I've preached it. But let's be real. We're all human beings. We're stuck here in this, in this mortal body. And as long as we're in this body, we'll have doubts. And there'll be distresses and tribulation will cause us to be off balance. But I want you to know something today. I want you to know that God's in control. And he's doing something behind the scenes that you may not know right now. To preach, what about my kids? What about my grandkids? Listen, the greatest thing you can do for them right now is not buy them groceries. It's to make sure that they know the Lamb of God. It's to, it's to make sure that they have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's great. The greatest thing in this world you can do for them is pick up a phone and call them and let them know that, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a cross for their sins. Oh, preacher, you think it's time. It is time we get back to the basics, church. Get back to the basics of not bigger is better, but better is being in the center of God's will. John, I want you to come to the piano. We're going to close here. I want you to just go back to that somebody's praying. I, man, what a blessing that is. And I, I want there to be somebody praying right now. I know you're stuck in the house and or maybe on your property and or maybe you have to go to work and you're stuck in the office by yourself and you can't have contact and but I want you to know something somebody's praying I, I love what the Lord told Peter he said Peter the, the devil's he wanted to sift you like wheat but here's what he said he said Peter I'm praying So I know he's praying. <laughs> the Bible says when we can't pray that the Holy Spirit is making intercession. So I know the Holy Spirit's praying. I want to ask you something. Are you praying? Huh? Here's what our prayer ought to look like today. Our prayer ought to be in repentance to God for playing the game for so long. We go to church and we sit in the pew and we hear the message and we don't move. We just sit there because it's for somebody else or because our pride won't let us get out of the pew and now you can't get out of the pew. You're in your house and it's you and God. I'm asking you where you're sitting will you say, God, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Maybe you're not even saved. That's why there's no fruit. If you're saved, there'll be fruit. Maybe you're just walking afar. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm praying for you right now. Right where you're at, you don't even have to see your screen. Right now, I want you to just to bow your head and close your eyes. Right where you're at. God, would you forgive the church? Starting in the pulpit and going to the pews. Would you forgive us for not being what we've called, been called out to be, and we've done it for a long time? Would you forgive us individually today? Forgive us for our lack of prayer. Forgive us for our lack of Bible study. 
God, would you reinstitute in the home now a time for mom and dad and the kids to come around the Word of God together. They may not understand anything they read. God, would we get back in your book again? God, would you reestablish the altar at home? If we used it, we wouldn't need as big a one in the church. Would you reestablish your supremacy in our life? Would we get over our politics and get back to loving one another regardless of what we are? God, would you help us to forget about our billfolds for a little while? Right now, all the money in the world can't save us. We can throw money at the problem. God, it's not going to help us. God, would you intervene in our life now? Would you do it? Would you forgive us of our sin and our lawlessness against God? Would you forgive us for the times that we wiped our feet on your grace? God, would you, would you forgive your people today that we could see 2 Chronicles 7, 14 in a brand new light if my people were called by my name will humble themselves and I pray right now all around living rooms and kitchens and bedrooms people that are listening that we'll humble ourselves get on our knees before God and say God forgive us your word tells us if we'll do that you'll hear from heaven you'll forgive us of our sins God you'll heal our land we need healing today we pray for an end God to this virus we pray for protection for our families and our church families. And God, we don't want to, ha- we don't want to not have it because we didn't ask for it. God, more important than anything we can do today, can we realize that when we're walking and talking in victory with you, God, that we're more than just conquerors. We're super conquerors today. If there are people lost, I pray right now, God, they would confess. The Bible says that they'll confess their sins. God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. That you're faithful and you're just to forgive them of their sin and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Would you save lost people? God, may we again be an encouragement to one another. The house of God. Put us back on the right track. Help us to refocus on what's important. Father, we'll glorify you. We'll praise you and we'll thank you for all that you do because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Remember, you're in our prayers. We want you to pray for us. If you have a need, uh, you can call the church office and we'll try to meet that need. Until Wednesday night, may God bless you is our prayer.